Yes, on the topic of solution-focused coaching, how that came about. Um, actually, I was, I was the first to enter the coaching field and to apply solution-focused uh, ideas into the coaching world because it, I was not only working in the clinical field, I was also working in the, in the field of business. I was very fascinated with family business, etc., but also uh, non-family businesses. And uh, I obviously I I talked about that, yeah. And Steve never commented much, yeah. He just listened and well, uh, but but Insu was oh what are you doing? What are, how does it work? Etc. Yeah, Etc. Et so. Um, I think the first time we did something together was in, in Washington at a conference. I don't remember. I think it was the Family Therapy Networker Conference. I think so. And uh, the title of the workshop was From Couch to Coach. And it was very successful. Yeah. Now, because it was new, and the, in those days, 1990, I think it was, in those days, those were the high days of managed scare in the States, yeah? the managed care uh, movement. So many, many people wanted to leave uh, the psycho psychological uh, psychotherapy field because there was too much stuff with insurances, uh, administrative, blah, 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 blah. So, um, and then in the beginning, it were all those therapists wanted to become coaches. They all want to become coaches. Be, I think in the States, certainly because of what I just said, managed scare, and also because of this idea that it would bring a lot more money. That was, that was a kind of idea they, that people had. Uh, and then strange things happened. Uh, people began uh, doing work with businesses who have, had never seen a company from the inside, who didn't know what a company was. Yeah. And then they called it coaching. Now, what's the difference? In those days, there was no difference. In those days, you, in those days, you had also psychoanalytical, psychoanalytical organizational development consultants. Like, huh? Yeah. It was a, it was a fad in those days. Yeah. I think, what's the difference between... Co and then, after a few years, people asked Steve... Uh, Mr. Deshaies, what's the difference between coaching and psychotherapy? And Steve always said, uh, there is no difference. There is only one difference, and that is the fee of the coach, which is higher than the fee of the therapist. And uh, I've heard him saying that jokingly, but he meant that. Steve was not interested in that field. Steve was not interested in business. It, it was, it, it couldn't care less. He was only interested in how can I apply my Occam's razor to help people again help themselves. But Insu was Insu was much more ambitious, yeah. And Insu was was hungry after all kind of experiences. So she and, and she was never afraid to. I mean, she was the kind of and start talking uh, to them as if they as if she had been born in a, in business, which was the case in with her family business at home, but uh, she didn't know anything. So, I, I don't agree. There is a major difference between psychotherapy and coaching. Uh, and that has to do with our three mandates. We have a mandate as a leader, so we take the lead in the on psychotherapy and in the coaching process. We have a mandate as a therapist slash coach where the, the, the mandate that we use is to create a context in which we help the client to again help themselves and each other uh, to obtain their goals, go into a process of transformation by using their own possibilities and resources. And then we have a third mandate, it's the mandate as a manager. We have our professional know-how, that's one of the major differences. And we make, uh, we make agreements with our clients yeah. to show up, to pay us, to do this, to do that, to don't do that. Now, 
We have these three mandates at the same time and they're always changing in the work we do with the client. I think the difference uh, in psychotherapy is that we say in psychotherapy the only goals that are important are the goals of the patient or of the client. Obviously, as long as they are aligned with what is good for men for health and what is not against the law. But that's it. Yeah. Uh, while in coaching, uh, we say the only goals that are worthwhile working at are the goals of the client and how these goals of the coachee are aligned to the goals of the company. And that is a major difference. Second major difference is in our man managerial mandate, we have to have a totally, not totally, but we have different, uh, different uh, competencies, skills, different knowledge. Yeah? Uh, as a psychotherapist, you have to know something about what can go wrong on the mental health side. Yeah. As a coach, you have to know something about how a corporation functions. So, so you have to know business economy. You have to know how a, a corporation inside functions. That's not the same as how a family system functions. So these are two, uh, I think, major differences. And they're not... I th the third thing is that, um, especially in psychotherapy, we're actually, I think, I am only interested in how do I relate to this client, and that can be a family, yeah? Uh, how do I relate to this client in such a way that uh, I, through this working relationship, I can help uh, the client embrace transformation? While the same goes for coaching, but in coaching and certainly in business consulting, there is an add-on. Uh, there is the add-on that you are much more linked to reality. Something needs to be done. Something needs to be accomplished. These rules cannot be broken, etc. So it is in, in coaching, it is also transformation, but it is at the same time also yeah, taking care of business. Yeah. So I think that's, that's three major differences. For me, solution-focused thinking and working is a tool and not a goal in itself. It's just a tool. Yeah? And when it comes to family businesses, this is the amalgamation of two different worlds. We have the world of the individual and family, where there are totally different finalities than in the world of business. So family slash business, it's the slash that makes it special. Yeah. Um, it's the confrontation of two systems, to speak in our lingo, that have a totally different finality. A business wants to survive and make money, or in days, in, in terms of today, add value, which can be even totally different things than, than, than money, especially in family businesses. While a, a family strives for Harmony, happiness, is a biological system. A business is not a biological system. So this, is, this, this combination makes that emotions run from one part through the uh, family, through the slash, to the business and vice versa. Yeah. And the familiness of a business can work as, as atomic power. And the way uh, the family and the business are able to use this atomic power, they make or an atomic bomb with it, uh, with, uh, with fights and, and disputes and what have you, or they make a, um, uh, a power, a power, uh, how you call that, where you make a station. power station of it. Yeah. Now, second thing is uh, a family businesses go through life cycles like a person and like a family and uh, these life cycles these they're intertwined but every family business needs a succession 
unless it goes broke, but then problem is solved. Yeah? Then you only have the family. Yeah? So the, the business succession is a very complex, sometimes complicated, but always complex endeavor. And it is a question of life or death for the, for the business. And it's something that people have not rehearsed because it's always the first time. Yeah? Certainly in G1 to G2, as we say that, yeah? some old family business. I was in Japan and I bought a little gong in, in a Kyoto in a, in a store and I saw a 1620. So I asked the guy, I said, is this a family business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says, is it old? Yes, yes, yes. 1620, 14 generation. Yeah? There, uh, the, the succession planning is not so complicated. Yeah? Um, but from G1 to G2, that's very often complicated. Also because many times, and research shows that, when the business is, uh, when the children are old enough and interested enough uh, to take over, then very often this, the company itself is in a, is in a, a phase of stagnation. It's not no long, it's, it's mature, it's big, it's sound, yeah, but it, uh, it lost his, his novelty, it lost his uh, uh, speed of movement, it needs a re, reinvestment, uh, it needs to change from, uh, from plastic boots to Nokia to, uh, to telephones and, it, and then something else. So when these phases come together, so that's when most, uh, most of the time I'm, I'm hired to help people and the business make that transition. And there are family therapy-like interventions that one needs to do. And sometimes there are also, also a great need of doing just business interventions, just economical, harsh business interventions. And to get them together, you need to coach the family the second generation and all the non-family family and the and the just the co-workers, they need to be coached into a, a new a new system that takes over the next year. So that's that's when people hire me. First of all, when, when these transitions happen, there is a lot at stake. And then conflicts may arise. And the, the one of the to make it very short as an explanation, there is when there is a conflict and you do mediation, so to speak, always look for what is common for all parties involved. And in a family business, that is the future of the, of the family slash business. So when you can put people around this concept of a, of a common future, then all these uh, tensions, struggles, fights, so to speak, evaporate. For the, for the sake of the, the bigger whole. That, that's how it functions. But that's hard work. But in, at the end of the day, that's always the process that happens. And obviously, a solution-focused approach, what still works well in spite of the problem? What are the resources of everybody? What are the resources of this company, of the co-workers, um, etc.? These are interventions that are very, very powerful. If you ask a, a family business that is in a dispute, who started this fight? Well, then you're, you're, you're talking for two years about this, of course, yeah? But if you, if you simply ask them, okay, so you've, you have regularly, you have fights and in the business and in the family, uh, could you give me an example how you ended the last fight? And what did you do instead? These are very simple things that we as a solution-focused uh, uh, practitioners know, but they're totally new for the client. When confronted with, uh, with, the, with the future, what's going, what's going to happen? How do we have to transform our business? How do we have to find a different alignment with micro and macroeconomic blah, blah, blah? Um, a business, as of natural, uses a miracle question. They call that strategic planning. It's exactly the same, yeah. Uh, they don't, I have not many times that I use the miracle question in strategic planning, but um, strategic planning is exactly the same process as a miracle question. It's like we're standing here, we want to be able to reach that point, 
and reaching that point, we look back at the little steps that we need to take to get to that point. So it's, it's projecting a possible future, which is a miracle question, yeah? but you call it business strategy. That's more the language of, of, a, of a business. And when you have this projection going, you look from the end uh, product of the projection back into the small steps that you, that, you are, that you will need to take in order to get there. So this, this way of thinking comes very natural to businesses. What, is, what I add from a, a solution-focused perspective is that business people tend to think only in terms of money and numbers. And I think there is a very good, very big value added to teach them the, the concept of added value. Yeah. Uh, so that added value is not only money, but what do you want to accomplish as a company? What is your common goal? What is your dream? Besides making money, why are you special? These kind of overarching ideas that have almost nothing to do with money stuff uh, are very helpful and very powerful. And actually, they, they come r straight out of solution-focused thinking. That's what future projection is all about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sh uh, shared values. Yeah, shared values. What is it that, why are we special? What is our raison d'être? Uh, why is this family business on the planet and worth to survive? Something like that. These are, and at, at first sight, they, they, they sound like very woolly things, but they're, you can calculate that. Yeah. But it's so much broader and more powerful than only, uh, only thinking about money. So these are... I don't know if that's solution-focused, but you know what, actually, that people sometimes, my students, they say, is this solution-focused? Is this solution-focused? What's the difference with the others? I'm not interested in, in talking about solution-focused coaching. These are the seven points of difference with la-la-la coaching, yeah? It's just a tool, yeah? Just for me, like, solution-focused approach is just a tool, but it is a powerful tool. I always have this this story in my head when they asked um, Mr. Chapman, the owner of Lotus Sports Cars in the 60s. In the 60s, uh, Colin Chapman with his company Lotus won everything. Formula One, two, three, rally cross, what have you. Everything that happened on four wheels, hill climbing, in the, in the middle of the 60s, Lotus won everything. And all of a, at a moment, a, a, a journalist comes, a specialized car journalist comes to interview Colin Chapman. And he said, uh, Mr. Chapman, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, how, how, how come? What do you do so that Lotus wins everything? I mean, sorry to say so, but I visited your company, your factory. You must have been to Mercedes, but I mean, uh, in, uh, in Mercedes, uh, they have as many engineers working on the brakes than you have in your complete company. I mean, how do you, I mean, the, the marketing, um, the marketing budget of Ferrari is double as big as your operating budget. How do you do this? And he said, add lightness. That's the secret of Lotus winning everything. I think that's the secret of, uh, of solution-focused approach too. Add lightness.